Welcome design students. In this video we're going to talk about colors and color picking, gradients and fills in Gravit. So what I have here are a couple of shapes that I've created. One circle here and one circle here. This one is red and this one is gray. When you create a shape, I'm going to create a square and make kind of a background here. When you create a shape in Gravit, it automatically puts that layer above the layer you had selected. I'm going to put this down behind. It also brings up the fill menu here and to change the color of this shape you click this little dot here and that brings up the color picker. Now the color picker allows you to select what you want to fill your shape with. First thing I want to call your attention to is this pull down menu here. When you click it you have some choices. You can fill it with a linear gradient, a radial gradient, an angular gradient, a texture, some noise, or a background. You can also change the color model that you're using. Right now we're using RGB and RGB stands for red, green, and blue. If you click this you can change to HSB which stands for hue, saturation, and brightness or CMYK which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. HSB is only available in the Pro version and CMYK is only available in the Pro version. So we're just going to worry about RGB right now. The color picker represents color, the color that you have in what's called an HSB slice here. Right now we have red selected and notice it's black down here at the bottom and white up in this corner and gray over in this area and red getting darker to black over here. Every color in computer graphics has three properties, hue, saturation, and brightness. If I take this little this little dot here and move it around, you can see I'm changing the color. If I move it all the way down to the bottom of the swatch, all along here, it's black. The brightness at this point of this color is zero. If I move it all the way up here, then the brightness is 100%. If I take this little dot here and move it over to the left, the color gradually changes to white. From left to right is the saturation of the color. So at 100% brightness and zero saturation, the color is white. If I lower the saturation, we gradually go from gray to black. So saturation can be thought of as the amount of gray in a color. And brightness can be thought of as how bright it is. That's why at 0% saturation it's white and that's why 0% brightness is all the way along the bottom as black here. So the mixture of these three properties determines what the color is in terms of red. The hue of the color is on this slider here. So by changing the hue, I change the color that I start with and then the one that I can use the HSV swatch to mix the brightness and the saturation. We also have here below the hue slider a opacity slider that gradually changes the transparency of the color. We also have here a hex number. You can type in a hex code number for the color that you want and you can find hex codes for colors by searching on the internet. Here is a color that is FFFF00 and that is a yellow color. So if I were to come in here and type in number sign FFF00, I'm going to get a yellow color. Oops, that's CFF00. These letters and numbers represent different values of red and green and blue. Two for red, two for green, and two for blue. So this is an equal mixture of red and green, which gives us yellow and no blue. That's what this represents. You can see the same thing represented in RGB number here. Equal mixtures of red and green and no blue. And that gives us yellow. We also have ready-made color swatches down here that you can use. And we can switch to the in-use colors and that shows you the colors that you have in your composition. And we can use the color mixer. And when you use the color mixer, if you change the hue, it gives you a mixture of colors that you have and it gives you some swatches that you can use in terms of H, S, and B. 
So the final thing we have here in the color picker is a eyedropper, which allows us to select the shape, click the eyedropper, it's also a shortcut to it right here, and sample a color. And that automatically fills in the selected shape. So let's experiment with gradients for a minute. I'm going to select this red sphere. And I'm going to open up the color picker and I'm going to fill it with a radial gradient. Now the radial gradient will allow us to make this color look more three-dimensional. The color gradient is made up of two sliders and if I move these sliders around you can see what happens to the gradient. I'm going to take this swatch or this slider, you can see I have it selected, and I'm going to make it a lighter shade of red, maybe even white. Actually let's do this. Let's make this one white and this one red. And now as you can see I've got a th more of a three-dimensional looking sphere here and if I play around with the slider you can see I'm moving it around. Now I could make this sphere look even better by making it part of a composition. So I'm going to make a little scene here with a sun in it and I'm going to use gradients to show you how to do that. So I'm going to delete this sphere. Then I'm going to make another shape to represent the sun rays. I'm going to make a star. So I'm going to come up here and get star. I'm going to get in the middle of the page and I'm going to create a star. And I want the star to be behind the ellipse. And I need to move it over a little bit. And I'm going to change the settings of the star. I'm going to give it more points. And I'm going to change its size so it kind of comes behind a little bit here. All right, so let's make a sky for the sun. I want to show you how to use gradients and the eyedropper to sample colors from a real picture. I have a picture of a sky here and I'm going to drag this into my canvas and I'm going to use this to sample colors from the sky for my background. So I'm going to select the rectangle I have for my background. I'm going to click the color picker, change to gradient. Oh, this is going to be a linear gradient. I'm going to select the first swatch and sample. use the eyedropper to sample a very light color blue from this picture. And then I'm going to select the second color swatch and use the eyedropper to select a very dark color blue. Now this cut this gradient is in the wrong direction so I'm going to use the rotating tools here to rotate it so that it's in the right direction. Now let's work on the sun. I've already done an image search to find pictures of the sun. I think maybe that I want to use uh, this one. So I'm going to select it, save image as. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And then I'm going to go back to grab it, drag it into my project, select the rays, get the color picker eyedropper, just use a shortcut. And I'm going to find a nice bright kind of orange color. For the, for the rays. To change the, um, the sphere part, I'm going to have to open up the color picker. I'm going to grab this flag, get the eyedropper, and sample a very light orange. Then I'm going to select the second flag and sample a very dark orange. I might even put a gradient on this one And do the same thing. And then of course we could um, play around with the position of the gradient to get a different look. And there you have it, a sun in the sky. One other quick thing we could do to this just for fun is I'm going to uh, copy this by using control C on my keyboard. I'm going to copy the star, control C, going to paste it in place and then I'm going to make sure that it's behind the other one and I'm going to blur it. And that should give our sun a nice glow. 
So that's our demonstration of how to use the color picker and how to use colors to make uh, fairly realistic looking designs. And I'll see you in the next video.